micro strategy. So the green line, the green dots are all sailors, big point purchases. Uh, he's rumored to have purchased more now. He's doing more now. His average price is like 28, 29. I think this is why Bitcoin, I remember this like range of Bitcoin, perfect time to take a vacation when, when like nothing is happening. The last time I saw this, you know, it was like over here where Bitcoin just did nothing for months and then it just went straight up because he just bought it all. He just took it all. I think that's what's going on over here. It's just, you know, it's like to him, it's like, oh my God, this is so juicy. I'm actually improving my average price by buying a lot of Bitcoin. Well, this guy's not taking any heat on the trade, and he can get it below his average price. So he's just going to keep right on. He's just going to keep right on. Okay, Bitcoin on DeMarc. So you have a nine top, right? And then it goes sideways. So this could mean seven more up days or four or five sideways days, and then maybe one big dot candle higher. This isn't going lower. This is sailor buying in here. And one through nine is, you know, that's DeMarc quantitative code for the beginning of a trend. Either the beginning of a trend or the end of a range trade. So this means you can have seven more updates in theory. And I think this thing can go higher. Like it's called harmonics. I got it from a guy who I do a guest show with. <clears throat> And, you know, these structures use Fibonacci numbers. Ooh. April 7th could be the top. Like the eclipse is the 20th. So maybe everybody just almost into Bitcoin on April 7th. And then maybe ETH and whatnot catches up at that point. Or, you know, maybe Bitcoin just trades really well into April 7th. And then you think about taking profits. Or, or and you don't take profits. You think about Buying dips right there, right? I think the next dip is going to be in late May. You're going to get a dip in June. Either often everything is all right trade or something happens in the crypto space that's negative for the space. But, you know, the hybrid solar eclipse is good for Bitcoin in the meantime. You know, April 7th, you could get the God candle up into April 7th is what I'm trying to say. Okay, Bitcoin dominance. I think it's a consensus at this point that this is going higher. Okay, it's going to 72% by the end of the year, in my opinion, but it has not broken out yet. It has not. You know, ETH continues to hold up. It's still in its range, but this is probably going to break out very soon. Right? And once Bitcoin dominance does break out, again, you know, when you have... This type of price action on Bitcoin going down, Bitcoin dominance going down. When it gets out of this range, it's the bigger the base, the higher in the space. And Bitcoin is going to outperform all year. And then ETH and Web3 will come into play in November. In between now and then, it's all Bitcoin. If you got a stock market crash in September and October, that's not going to be good for all coins. But that does mean you want to come out long Web3 if they mark all that stuff down to zero. So the game is for a private webinar is to reallocate money from losing altcoins into Bitcoin and then reallocate, you know, maybe even fresh capital into altcoins in Web3 after the stock market crash in the fall. <sighs> okay, ETH versus Bitcoin. So this diamond formation is serious. There's been a very definitive breakout and ETH should continue to underperform Bitcoin ETH versus Bitcoin is probably going back where it was at the start of the bull market or back in, I'm sorry, back in March of 2021. Right. That was actually when Bitcoin popped and ETH took off. So ETH is going to unwind all of this relative performance. Yeah. And you want to buy ETH when ETH versus Bitcoin is, you know, down here. Okay, let's talk about the dollar. There's all this talk about the dollar not being the reserve currency of the world anymore. It makes for great crypto Twitter talk. That's the wrong talk. 
If everyone's talking about it on crypto Twitter, it's wrong. The question isn't, should the dollar be the world's reserve currency? The question is, the only answer to a debt crisis is a currency devaluation. Until let the dollar go lower. I mean, Powell's read an economics textbook. He does not care if the dollar goes lower. It actually helps the competitiveness of U.S. companies to have a lower dollar. It's great if you want to take a vacation in Europe, but it's terrible for corporations. So if the dollar goes lower, Powell doesn't care. He doesn't. Matter of fact, Powell's going to pretty much stand up at the podium and be like, hey, you guys got what? $270 trillion? You had $250 trillion in nebulous financial risk and $17 trillion in deposits? We can't print that much money. The capital markets is just going to have to come in and reprice everything. So the focus is not, oh, should the dollar be the world's reserve currency? The question is, 1985, in a different set of circumstances where the government just said, we want the dollar to go lower, and they just let it, you know, the dollar index went from 150 to 84 in a matter of, I don't know, two, three years? I don't see why any reason why the dollar index can't go from 103 to 60 during 2023, this completely unwind this whole up tree, and then so. And if that happens, how do you profit from that? Like, yeah, okay, there's something scary out there, and you can hide under the desk and be a prepper, and I think all of that's a great idea. But nobody's thinking about how to make money from the dollar going massively lower. Because if you have a debt crisis, the only way out of a debt crisis is a currency devaluation. Now, a lot of people think the U.S. is going to turn into Argentina, going to have hyperinflation. That's another big thing on crypto Twitter. Well, you're going to have hyperinflation, but I think you're going to have a massive trade where the dollar goes lower and commodities go up. Because if you buy uh, uh, John Murphy's book, Intermarket Technical Analysis, that's what he'll tell you. Dollar down, commodities up. So tactically in the dollar index, you got 102.27. Dollar index is below 102.27 using hidden pivot analysis. You can definitely see 91.5. Definitely. Like on a, on, a, on a straight draw. So, you know, you can draw this differently. This, this down move may already be kind of in motion. I, I don't see how to, I, there's no reason for the dollar index to be above 100. No. Let's talk about commodities. It's probably going to be a geopolitical event. You have a lower, you have a new low in wheat with a higher low in stochastics. And in my opinion, this chart looks amazing and wheat's going up. Like if you need a hedge, you need to get money out of the system. Like wheat futures, wheat call options, like, you know, if you're with an entity that you trust and the futures contracts are not in a bank, which they're not, they're probably held by the exchange, then this is going up. This is going up a lot because this was a really big downtrend here. And people just massively gave up on this thing. This is obviously going the other way. I mean, this thing crosses the 60-day exponential moving average because it's never been able to hold above that in this like bear trend. This is going to smoke to the end. This is wheat monthly on DeMarc work. So here's your nine bottom, right, which probably mirrors your nine top. And in wheat, the Elliott wave goes one, two, three, four, five. There is an Elliott wave case for this to be a bottom. If you're above 723 on a monthly closing basis, you could be talking about a new high. I mean, it may be tough to trade because it's off the lows, but you know, I'd be buying monthly breakouts on the close above 723. Brute oil. Okay. Elliott wave count is one, two. And the support from the DeMarc point held from 2015 and 2018. Like th this is like, this is monthly charts. So you got a monthly close in a couple of days. This looks like oil to the moon. This looks like a hurricane in Houston that disrupts gasoline refineries and just straight up and down, dollar down, commodities up. I like wheat better, but, you know, there's forecasts out there for $140 oil. 
I mean, you're not the stock market's going to crash by itself. It's going to be a catalyst. So if you have higher rates and higher commodity prices, that's a disaster. 